this is a great story. So at the same time, we are seeing all these different companies fire or make their CEOs go and resign or lay them off or moving people off into the board. We are seeing SushiSwap go and hire a CEO. According to new reports from the Sushi community, Jared Gray has now been voted in as a CEO according, or as of Monday today. SushiSwap, of course, is a decentralized exchange birthed out of DeFi summer, a famous battle with Uniswap, which arguably they lost, and that's why they have to go and hire a CEO. Zach, I want to throw this one over to you, get your take on it. SushiSwap, I think, is near and dear to a lot of people's hearts within crypto, and this is an interesting change in their project. Yeah, lots of drama over there, right? So this was sort of birthed in drama and they've never been really able to shake it. So their CTO left. I think the the stand-in co-founder, I think it was Xerox Maki, he left. So they've been sort of uh, not entirely with a chief figurehead for a while, if I recall correctly. So this vote um, definitely sort of closes the books on what, what was a bit of a rocky period in, in Sushi's history. Um, you know, this guy's going to get $500,000 in his base salary. It was, it was originally going to be $800,000, uh, but there was some controversy even surrounding that. So um, it just goes to show how hard it is to wrangle these decentralized beasts. Uh, even though I think if you look at the wallets that voted, it was only like, you know, like five wallets sort of determined the fate, right? Like five wallets controlled like 95% of the voting power. So it does also speak to sort of the, I don't know, sus nature of decentralized government, uh, governance more, more broadly. Uh, so like, I, I don't know. I think like the sushi experiment was really interesting to watch when it came and said, we're going to do a vampire attack on Uniswap. But if you look at TVL right now, it didn't ultimately work. There wasn't ultimate, there wasn't staying power. You know, I think the TVL of sushi uh, by last check over on Define Llama was something like 500 million. That figure on Uniswap is something like 5 billion, just to put in, in context where those two projects currently stand. So I don't know, a lot of different ways we could go on this one. I'm going to toss it to Wendy though. I, I, I bet she has some thoughts. So I remember when this went down, I think it was summer of 2020. I was at dinner and I just had happened to log on Twitter. I saw all of this insanity ensue. I was like, holy F, what is happening? I started drinking wine and I was just going through everything. I was actually able to get Sam from FTX to come on and talk about it because I feel like they sent everything. I, I remember correctly. He kind of like fixed or de-escalated the situation and, um, it was just a really bizarre time in crypto. Like I just remember everybody was so upset. Everybody was so mad. There's all these craziness. And then the FUD got linked to this other crypto project and they tanked and it's just crypto and decentralization. And I still don't really necessarily like the way DAOs are structured because I feel like it still gives people with lots and lots of tokens. People got an early, a lot of money to kind of swoop in and get to dictate what happens. But it was, it was a good time. It's when we had all of those food tokens and yay for food tokens, not financial advice. <laughs> yeah, yams. We need a taco token. Um, but before we go on a tangent about taco. Well, probably. I mean, yeah, it would make sense. <laughs> I think that if we, sorry, I just really lost it there. I was really funny in Taco Dogans. I think if we look at uh, decentralized governance, almost every project I've looked at when we talk about a vote like this, it's always five accounts with a shit ton of tokens that are making decisions. And so that is definitely a problem that needs to be solved. I think when we look at Sushi Swap, I remember when that story came out last year and the CTO left and they were like, it's just madness and chaos behind the scenes. I don't know if one person can fix this. I think someone coming in to, to kind of be at the helm, we, we may see more people leave the project because if it is chaotic, I don't, those chaotic people must still be there. And so there's a larger shift than just bringing a new person into the project. I, I do want to bring up um, a quote that I read this morning. So it says, there is still quite a bit of inefficiency regarding automated market makers, protocol user experiences, and other areas of the industry where we should continue iterating to build richer product experiences. So that's what Gray's going to work on. I think that's super important for accessibility when we talk about these DEXs, but to... To have a great user experience and to attract people to the decks, I think you need to clean up what's going on behind the scenes. And so there's going to be a lot of work cut out for him, I think.
Will, do you have a last thought, Will? I saw oh, your hand you. go up. What, well, Wendy, also what's your last, last thought, thought so before we wrap polite. this thing up? Who's 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 it going to be? Okay, who's it going to be? Okay, I'll Duke take it. it out. I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. Just bear market things. That this is what the story is really about. Uh, Uniswap on one hand, more dominant, but they have a lot of problems right now. There's this question about censorship resistance. They just raised a bunch of money. What are they going to do with this money? Are they going to continue to uh, be okay with OFAC censoring? And are they going to become more like a mainstream fintech app? You know, have a back end that a lot of other fintech companies use and are approved by the, like the regulators at large. And then on the other side, you have SushiSwap, which is like more or less like a backwater project now. A lot of people aren't talking about it. It's beloved in the community, but it has a lot of governance issues. They're still trying to figure their, themselves out. So I think going into bear market, we already have some nice narratives being formed where we have our winners, but our winners still have problems they got to figure out. 